Hello Tech Pros, episode 214. We don't think we're the smartest person in the room, but you know, what makes us strong is, is our ability to listen to what our customers need. Welcome to the podcast where I chat with professionals who are getting the job done using technology seven days a week. Each week we start with Motivation Monday. Tuesday is about productivity, Wednesday, leadership, Thursday, technology, Friday, people in communication, Saturday, entrepreneurship, and Sunday, being unplugged. All right, let's get started. Hello, Tech Pros. This is Chad Bostic, and I'm excited to introduce our featured guest today, Ron Etzman. Happy Thursday, Ron. Happy Thursday. Are you geeked out and ready to talk technology? Ready and go. <laughs> Ready, let's go. Ron Asman is the Managing Director of Authentics Limited, pioneers of multi-channel ID authentication and record generation. Mr. Asman has led the company to the position of technology leader and provider of choice of the world's major players. Under Mr. Atzman's leadership, Authentics introduced the concept of secure customer onboarding, redefining fraud prevention best practices, but also influencing customer acquisition success rates across financial service markets. So, Ron, this sounds like a pretty neat space that we're talking about. And to be quite honest with you, I'm not sure exactly in what space that we're talking about. So, when we say multi-channel ID authentication and record generation, the first thing that pops into my mind is just good old-fashioned database stuff, right? So, I'm, I'm creating a record in a database, and I want to make sure that that record is unique and that it's valid and that it's great. But then I also think about, okay, well... Um, ID authentication. Maybe we're talking about people. Maybe we're trying to determine that you know Chad is really Chad, and Chad is not, you know, Nancy or Bob or something like that. So, what exactly are we talking about when we're talking about the multi-channel ID authentication and record generation space? Well, you are definitely correct. I mean, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit confusing, Chad, um, because you know when you talk about ID, you know, you know, old school stuff is is all about data. But um, we are we are actually not in the data business. We are in the image processing business. And when we're talking about IDs, there's it's not just data. It's IDs as for documents, identifying documents. You know, you know the um, uh, driver license, uh, passports, ID cards, residence permits. You know, just to give a bit perspective to your U.S. customer base. You know, it's these driver license that you used to. Invent in order to get um, a bit of booze when you're under 21. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're talking <laughs> about. So, um, so we basically we are in the onboarding of uh, users while using documents. And I know it might be a bit, you know, for some people a bit boring. But you know, in the uh, in the financial service business, I mean, like one of the issues for doing custom onboarding to open an account. Or doing any other financial procedures in a bank, like um, uh, getting a mortgage or getting a car loan or changing your bank accounts, um, uh, there's a uh, there's a, a big, a very thick book called uh, uh, the the Basel Regulation, and each year they launch a new a new chapter, and in the chapter number two, which is called Basel Two, it says about okay, how do you onboard the customer? And they're talking about how, so how do you know what's called, uh, the acronym is called KYC, which stands for Know Your Customer. And one of the KYC processes is checking documents. So we basically are helping um, financial, not, not, not anymore now, but we also, it slipped to some other territories, but basically it started from, um, from uh, um, you know, what drives our business now is, Regulation, okay, that you know, financial service. In order to open a bank account, you need to submit a document. If it's either in um, the branch operation, or if you do it in, in the online space. So either way, so that's what we talk about um, multi-channel, which they also, you know, the the marketing guys call it omni-channel. So either online or tele or branch. Gotcha. So this is very interesting because um, I was just on a cruise ship. We were talking about this right before we, we got on the call and I was on the cruise ship. And it was very interesting because there were 
Oh my gosh, so many different com- uh, countries represented on board, both from a staff perspective as well as um, as uh, the people who were cruising, right? The cruisers. And so I'm, I'm just trying to think through all the different types of documentation that had to be provided from birth certificates from the people in the United States to passports from people outside the United States to um, the, the worker identification for the people that were coming on the ship to work to, you know, the, the worker information for the people who were not a part of the cruise line, but were more of contractors and, and so forth. And, uh, it's gosh, man, just thinking about that, I've never thought about the different types of documents from that type of perspective. And to think about the complexities of if I'm a cruise ship director, uh, and I'm trying to account for all the people coming on board the ship, like, how do I make sure that this passport is a real passport? How do I make sure that this document is a real document? And how do I make sure that Chad is really Chad and not uh, and not some, you know, bad dude who's just trying to jump on board and, and take a free cruise somewhere? So pretty well, interesting. Hey, 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 taking a free cruise is not that bad. <laughs> it's not bad <laughs> from my perspective. I mean, I think it would well, be a, a great place if they just gave me cruises care. for free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but um, you're definitely right. I mean, like, You know, if we go back, and I think it's going to be interesting if you go back to understand where it all starts. I mean, like, we we are not dealing with financial services, but we haven't started in financial services. If if you look about our history, you would see that we started as a small R&D unit more than 20 years ago uh, in a bigger company called ICTS. That's I for India, C for Charlie, T for Tango, S for Sugar. And ICTS, which is our parent company, uh, is uh, which we eventually spun off and we are now like, uh, we run our own PNL and we're going on our own path. Uh, we're still owned by them, but you know, we have our own destiny in that respect. Does uh, passenger screening in airports globally, either in Europe, in Asia, or in the US? And, and our tool was developed for our parent company in order to actually, you know, streamline the customer on board. I mean, like, it's not the customer, like, it's the passenger. And, you know, we, you know, we, I mean, ICTS is a big, big, it's a big company, you know, with thousands of people and we employ, as I said, many people. And, you know, we wanted to take out the human factor from the agent that check you before you board the plane, you know, for high risk flights and, you know, riskier regions. Okay, that, you know, they don't, you know, as you rightly said, just to give you a bit of perspective, in the UK, there are 47 different versions of UK driver licenses. Wow. In the US, you have 50 states. Mm-hmm. Each state has three versions for adults for driver license, three versions for uh, below, I think it's under below 18 or 21, I can't really remember, it's a bit different. Then you have the new ID card, so, you know, so there's no way there's a person that is is that will... Um, uh, will bring his knowledge to an art because you know it's like it's not hundreds of versions it's thousands of versions and you know governments you know they launch new versions all the time so so that's where we started more than 20 years ago in order to automate this process and basically take out the human factor out of the equation um, but um, there were um, there were three I would say um, um, events in the life cycle of the company or the R&D unit that brought us to where we are, which basically um, 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 brought us to where we are. So the first one was, uh, um, as I said, you know, when, in our pre-discussion, we um, um, are R&D based is our core technology is based out of Tel Aviv in Israel. And we first found out not because something good, but something bad happened in Israel, but uh, um, in the heydays of uh, the suicide bombings in uh, 2001, 2002, we had an incident while we had someone who came in with a fake passport mm. and um, and make a um, created a bit of a acted himself. So he killed a few people, and that's where mm. the first time we were approached by the authorities. They were looking for um, for a solution for the point of entry. That's how we understood that. Our tool that we've developed internally is a very good tool for immigration control. So that's why we started selling to governments. But, um, you know, as you grow into the market, um, you understand that, you know, immigration is a limited market. And we, that's how we got to the second point. Actually, by coincidence, we read, 
was uh, 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 I think it was 2008, uh, an article about um, a bank getting fined for not doing proper KYC, and they got fined because you know they haven't checked properly the documents. And then we said, hold on, immigration is nice, but financial services is even nicer. Right. And the market is is, is ten, ten, 10 times full bigger, if, if not, it's not even 10 times, like it's an, it's almost an endless market. So that's how we started moving from doing um, pure immigration to doing FS and uh, for stands for financial services. But it was still, uh, it was our own product, which is a client service solution. And, um, and, you know, and, you know, integrating to banks in the, uh, late last century, I mean, like 2008, 9, 10, you know, they didn't have a really incentive to, um, to um, I would say, um, innovate and make more operation efficiency, you know, because it's not just checking the documents, you know, it's also, you know, you need the, the whole procedure, you know, getting the document, photocopying it, you know, archiving it, exactly the data, it's, it's an operation efficiency issue. So, while we were having a bit of, you know, at these times um, challenges with the old school financial services, we saw early you know, in 2000, let's say 11, 2012, you know, uh, the rising of uh, online financial services, you know, as they now they're branded FinTech. And that's when we launched our, um, our online product, you know, because, you know, if you if you are if you want to open, I mean, like U.S. is a bit it's a late bloomer in that respect. But if you look at Europe in that respect, um, you know, there's the new it's called the Challenger banks. It's all the new uh, banks in the U.K. and in Europe that you know are getting licenses in order to you know to become a purely online banking platform. So mm -hmm. these operations, as also their emergency players, they need to onboard. The customer relatively quickly and in a compliant way and you can't anymore wait for you know for the user to you know submit the document and then it goes to a bank office service you know it's not like you're standing in the branch you know for like you can wait for like 15 20 minutes until they do that if you don't do that instantly i mean like in a couple of seconds you're dead i mean like right. you know dead. i mean like in our real life you know in the virtual life no, the customer, the customer will, will not continue in your web application. So that's basically where um, we, I mean, like that's how basically we evolved from, you know, doing, you know, 20 years ago immigration and passenger screening to coming, you know, to reinventing ourselves as a solution for uh, um, the rising of the fintech industry. But you also, we also start to see now like the old school banks. I mean, like uh, coming and say, okay, we need to innovate. We need to make it. You know, we need to be more agile, not just in the uh, not just in the online space, but also the branch. You know, you no know, people are getting a bit more, I would say, um, um, tired from waiting. You know, and standing in line, and they want. You know, I don't know. Maybe the internet makes made us used for getting stuff instant. So the tolerance for, for time is becoming, you know, people are getting less tolerant, you know, for getting waiting from that respect. So Ron, we've covered a lot of information here over the, the history of this space. Very interesting. As I'm thinking back to 20 years ago, where I was 20 years ago, or maybe 25 years ago, 25 years ago, uh, I was in moving into high school and there were a lot of kids getting fake IDs, right? And so uh, yes. I just watched this movie recently uh, called Super Bad that kind of took me back to those days when, when the rage was getting a fake ID and, and knowing someone who had a nice computer, a nice printer, or had someone in an, in an office somewhere who could print up a fake ID, you know, and you would have these kids printing up like, I'm from Hawaii and my name is now McLovin. And you're like, oh my God, that's ridiculous. You know, <laughs> just hilarious stuff like that. Um, but taking it back even further, right? If you think of 50 years ago or 100 years ago, what was the the document processing and check and ID validation process like for people before the internet, or, right? Or before this type of technology was invented? And I'm thinking back to oh my gosh, the the border patrol or the cruise ship director or just the uh, the guy that was selling beer at the at the local mart, right? He's got to be able to just make a, a gut check and say, hey, is this person 
is this person really McLovin from Hawaii, right? Or they, or are they really uh, uh, a 17 year old kid trying to get some alcohol here? And uh, now, over the course of a lot of of interesting technology upgrades that have happened that you guys have been a part of for the last 20 years, it's not just that, right? It's not just identifying who the person is, but it's being able to process that information and and put the whole system in place together so that we can get that information faster and faster, not just to check that they're okay, but to also improve the experience of the customer. As you said, like the, the millennials now and just us in general, right? We are absolutely intolerant of wasting time. And whether it's online or offline, we expect, we have greater expectations now than ever before of, I just want this thing to be over. I want it to be done. I want to click a button. I want to sign the form. I want to, I want to skip through all the end user license agreements. And I want to just say, yes, 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 done, and everything's processed, and then I get a green light, and I can go on about my business, whether that's in banking or anywhere else. So I love the fact that this helps not just on the online space, but also in the banks themselves, in the uh, in the actual locations, because when you're standing in line, dude, that's even worse than when you're having slow things on the internet, right? Because when you're having a slow day on the internet, it's just like you get frustrated, you go have a cup of coffee, and you try it again later and hope that the network connection is uncongested but when you're standing in line in like a bank or financial services uh, situation wherever you're at lines are horrible that's the most horrible thing that i can think of today uh because you there's nothing you can do about it there's nothing you can do except for just wait and wait and and the more you wait the more frustrated you're getting so um how do you feel that your customers are reacting or changing now that they have this technology in place? Well, it comes from different respects. I mean, like, you also need to remember, it's not just the line. It's the space where you're standing. It mm. is costing the money. So let's start about, you know, property. I mean, like, look, look, look at this. Okay, so you're talking about, you know, the customers with, you know, that have the space. They have, they have a few challenges, okay, these, uh, uh, I would say, the, the, the old heritage banks. Um, one is you is you know they have customers who are purely in the online space. If it's uh, simple by BBVA, if it's Lending Club, if it's Remitly or or you know any other the remittance place. Okay, so one is you have these smaller, much more agile businesses that are giving service instantly. So and and they don't have the the heritage of you know one the branches to the back office. Okay. So, I mean, but also you can't eliminate the branch, okay? You have still, there's still stuff, you know, even me, I mean, like, I'm not a millennial, okay? I'm, 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 I'm you know, I was born in the mid-70s, and, you know, you know, no, there's still stuff that you need to do if you like it or not, you need to come to the branch, okay, to do some stuff. You know, I, if I look into myself, I come to the branch once every six months, you know, just to do, you know, something specific or you need, you know, uh, from that perspective. But um, um, for them, it's kind of, if you have longer queues, it means you have you need to have bigger space. And they don't want to have bigger space because they're looking to cut down on their property size. Mm. So that's one thing. But also you need to remember from that perspective, okay, that, you know, why are they queuing? They're queuing not because, you know, the, the, the branch manager had a bad day, and he said, okay, so you, all of you, stand in and I wanted to punish you because I'm having a bad day. Mm -hmm. It's not that respect. It's because the procedures in the bank are just too slow. And one of the procedures, okay, is, is you know, the whole issue of other is verifying who you say you are. And, 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 and that's just take time, especially for, you know, a bit more... For account, you know, if you want to open a bank account, or if you want to get a mortgage, or you're going to loan, or you want to do changes into into uh, your bank account. I mean, you know, you need to understand that the banks they have a code book. They haven't they haven't wrote the code book. The regulators wrote the code book, okay, and they need to fulfill the code book. So what they're trying to do, these banks, okay, is to try to automate as much as they can that code book, okay, not because they want it. You know, because they love it, because they need it, in order to in order to make it much more efficient, and by doing that, okay, they they'll be able basically to to cut down on their queues on the branches. I can give you know what I'll give you a live example. We've been doing this 
Um, and again, I mean, we have uh, we have customers in the U.S., we have customers in Europe. But I think you know one that we can uh, 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 we can speak out of is is we help uh, you know most of the car finance. Sorry, most of the car manufacturers they have their own finance arms. And one of our customers in the in a, in the car in the car business is uh, uh, Nissan Renault Infinity. And one of the processes that we uh, that we provide them is car financing, especially in the UK. And until, I don't know, I'm, I know it's not, you know, it's, it's an interesting story, but uh, what we help them is basically in reality for the user, I mean the user, sorry, the customer, um, to get a, an instant uh, um, an answer on a car loan in 20 minutes. You need to understand that before they use their system, you know, if you were to come to the dealership and want to buy um, a Nissan, if you submitted your request for a loan until 12 noon, you will get an answer by 4 p.m. Okay. If you submit it after 12 noon, you will get the answer tomorrow morning. Mm. That's not really nice experience. If you want to car, come and buy a car, you know you lose. You, there's a good chance you lose the customer in the process. So while so they have deployed their solution, it's now been the fifth year they've been working with us. And, and what we've done is that now they're willing to say, to them, listen, give us 20 minutes. We'll run the whole process via using our, our solution. And we'll give you, in, in, I mean, like in reality, you can, you can drive out with a car in 20 minutes if, if we're willing to give you a loan. If you don't want to pay cash, of course, and cash is king. But, you know, most, most, most um, in our days, you never pay cash for the car. You usually <laughs> get, a, you, you get, it, you get it, you get it financed. And it gives them the flexibility to sell the car and move and move more cars out of the showroom, just because you know I come to the dealership and it just the experience is super slick. And from their point of view, from uh, from uh, Nissan, Renault, Infinity, and I, it basically automated all the back office. It allows them to basically run it very quickly, very smooth, no typos, no missing data gaps, and basically you know give him say okay. We'll do it very quickly, and we'll give you a car loan. And do here's your car, and have a get have a great day. So I mean, it's just they need they understand these banks. They some of them they do it because they are innovative, like Renault Nissan. Some of them are doing it because you know the competition is just killing them, and they need to modify themselves to the changes in the industry. It's like you know. It's like how it's an interesting story. I'm not, I'm not anyway, but you know, it's like when Netflix came, you know, and they tried to compete against Blockbuster, right? Okay, and in the end, the beginning of the day, listen, you don't need to go to the to the to the shop. We'll send you the CDs, and then you know, and then the internet came, and you know, now we can stream that. So the hell with it. Let's kill the CDs. So it's all about you know, and you know, you know the fact you know there were not a lot of Blockbuster, but Blockbuster didn't understand where the market was going and died. And by the way, I, I used to work in Blockbuster in my early days, so it's a bit of a, it's a bit, you know, I'm talking about of, you know, a bit of, um, um, a bit of, uh, you know, of, you know, nostalgic, you know, but Blockbuster mm -hmm. was fun. It was a fun shop. Yeah, man. Uh, gosh, the the world is changing so fast. The processes are changing. The technology is changing, and just our expectations are changing. And so companies need to adapt. They need to um, they need to change their processes. They need to adapt because if they don't, they're going to die the way of the blockbuster, right? So, yes. Ron, that's a great segue transition into the third segment here on this podcast, which is the future of technology. So we've talked about the past, all the all the problems that that customers and the agents had to deal with, and then the present, what what uh, you guys are solving today. So in just a moment, let's talk about the future of technology and the future of this space. But first, we'll take a quick break and thank our sponsors. This episode of Hello Tech Pros is sponsored by Minio Cloud Storage. Minio is a cloud object storage server for developers and DevOps written in Go. The Go programming language is the emerging language of choice for modern cloud infrastructure projects, and it allows Minio to be highly concurrent and lightweight. Minio is Amazon S3 compatible, built with microstorage architecture in mind, but at its heart, Minio is simple, scalable, and supported by a passionate developer and user community. In episode 89 of Hello Tech Pros, I talked with A.B. Periasami, 
one of the founders of Minio, about the importance of community support and recruiting software developers who are as passionate about their product's code as artists are of their art. Check out that episode at hellotechpros.com slash eight nine and check out Minio Cloud Storage at Minio.io. That's M-I-N-I-O dot I-O. Are you new to podcasting? Are you looking for a fast, high-quality, yet budget-friendly podcast production team? Let Transource Media take care of you. With a team of professional audio and video editors, writers, and graphic artists, they can help you build your podcast from planning, post-production, and platform submission. Using only cutting-edge software and studio equipment, they're here to make each and every show sound at its best. To get a free quote, please visit www.transourcemedia.com or send them an email at marketing at transourcemedia.com or call them at 209 209- 505-5693. Transource Media, transforming businesses through the power of multimedia. Okay, we're back with Ron Atzman. Ron is the managing director of Authentics Limited, pioneers of multi-channel ID, authentication, and record generation. And before the break, we were talking about what is this space? Well, it's really about proving that somebody is who they are, right? So if you think of the actual physical documents, like a driver's license, a passport, a birth certificate, a whatever, all of that type of of regulatory information that proves who you are, and then on the online space, right? So connecting to those agencies and making sure that, that we are who we are. So we're helping out, or Authentics is helping out in the both in the uh, border control areas as well as in the financial services. So in financial services, it's all about improving the customer experience. Right? We don't want to stand in big queues. We don't want to wait for hours on end to get our approval. We want to just you know click a button. We want to sign the thing. We want to get the financing on our car, and we want to go on about our business. So Ron, as we think about the future of this space over the next five years, ten years, twenty years. Years, what what big changes or challenges do you see that we're going to need to overcome? Um, well, I mean, the industry, I mean, not the industry, I mean, the, the, it's not our industry. I mean, like the world is creating new challenges and new issues uh, from that perspective, either from a regulatory point of view or just, you know, industries that are being created. So I'll give you, I'll give you two interesting examples, okay? So... And again, I'm sorry for, you know, I mean, the U.S. is a fascinating market, but, you know, I think leading from an innovative point of view, I think Europe in that respect is innovating from a compliance point of view, and that's in, that basically drives our business. I mean, like, so when when you come into when you come into a bank, okay, one of the procedure cases, so they check the document, and then they need to see that the person that they see in front of the document is to see who they are. I mean, like, to verify that, you know, you say who you say you are. Mm-hmm. Now, there is a problem in the online environment, you know, it's in the KYC process, it's called anti-impersonation. And, you know, and so the regulators, uh, the ones that were advanced enough to do that more online said, okay, how do we see that the person who's submitting this document via the website or via the, or we see it more and more, the mobile app is actually the person behind this document because, you know, you might be, as you rightly said, you might have printed my driving license, okay? That you know, let's uh, let, let let's just for the, you know argument's sake say that you know I'm based out of New York, uh, I live on uh, I don't know in Soho, and but it's not really wrong, it you know, and it's actually it's you. Mm-hmm. So what drives us? Okay, so we also want to see um, that okay, connecting the document to the person. So. And as you rightly, you, you know that, you know, so you need to do a, a face comparison. So it's okay to the user, listen, you know, submit your document with your phone and, and then take also a selfie of yourself and you submit it in one API call to the document. Now, um, as you're aware, you know, um, uh, face comparison tools have been out in the market for many many years now they use mainly or mainly on homeland security uh, but the problem in the in the in that respect is that especially in the airports is you control um, I mean like um, not you I mean like the the, the, the the security companies they control the input device they control the cameras 
these are very high end cameras and they can you know auto focus them on whoever they want to be used right the problem in an, in the online space is that um, um, you you don't control the input device you're in the mercy of your i mean like if you're like like PayPal or one of customers, PayPal is in the mercy of their user, how they use a mobile device. So, um, and we tr- and so we are trying to be compliant and help our customer in this anti-impersonation issue, issue that, you know, compare the document to the person submitting it. Um, so the innovation came from, from our respect is we tried using, you know, multiple vendors in the face compare tool. But the problem is that, you know, the on the online environment creates its own challenges when it comes to quality of the images. So I would say that you know that's you know so we I am a great believer if you can buy and not develop, do that. Okay, focus on what you're doing. Great. Um, so um, and what I see is so we so we need to develop and that's how I see the market from a, from a from a user point of view, I mean, that that's where the, the, the market is going on uh, providing um, automated uh, self, self-compare, we call it, in the mobile space. Um, I'm guessing there'll be going to be a few more. I mean, like, it's not like we're going to be the only provider, but from an automation point of view, we're currently the uh, we are, I mean, like, by far the lingo that respect. So it's one where the market is going. Another one that creates, you know, great opportunity to the market is the sharing economy. Mm-hmm. You know, all the Ubers and the Lyft and Upwork, you know, there are many, many sharing economies. Now that's create another challenge. The challenge here, okay, so everybody is registering to other uh, uh, rent their place or offer themselves as an employee or, or drive themselves a car. But how do you connect between um, um, the virtual world and the real world? And unfortunately, the only tool at the moment is 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 um, is the document so you see you know i don't you know you start seeing different opinions not just just in the financial services but you know you the internet creates new sectors that needs the documents to be used because it's the only standard stuff that currently exists and the problem with data when you said in the first place data is one it's a commodity second you know you can buy data um, anywhere. It's not like you can't buy fake documents, okay? But from an image point, from an image, uh, image processing point of view, it's a bit more difficult uh, to fake uh, an ID. By the way, everything is breakable, even our solution. I mean, like, there's no foolproof. Mm-hmm. Right. But when you buy data, I mean, data is data. You can't, you know, when you buy, there's no, like, a seal, okay, this data is protected. It's just a <laughs> data piece. So you just, so that's, so I see the challenges, you know, coming from new sectors in the industry that they need, and that create new opportunities in our sector. So if we'll try to sum it up, you know, new industries are coming up, but also trying to, um, to be compliant with different regulators who are looking to take uh, offline experience to an online experience. Yep. So many, so many new problems are coming up in these unregulated markets in these brand new markets that are just popping up because we're in uncharted territory, right? So uh, I worked very briefly for a sports entertainment company um, that did uh, basically you you competed against other people for fantasy football, for fantasy baseball and stuff like that. And you competed for real money. And so there's a big know, know your customer component of that to make sure that you don't have, you know, underage kids taking part of the, of this really cool, snappy, awesome application that makes it really easy to, uh, to compete against your friends and against other people. But you know what, that's, uh, you don't want little kids playing that. Uh, because there's there's real money involved, and you don't want people with habitual gambling problems to play that because it could it could cause problems too. And this is a a new space that nobody's ever worked in before. And the same thing with with Uber and everything else, right? How do we know that the drivers are really the drivers that are going to pick you up and not just like loaning my account to you know my buddy down the street and so forth? So lots of right. new opportunities, lots of new challenges. Fascinating, fascinating 
topic that we've been talking about today, man, is just kind of opening my mind to really looking at this whole space all over again, because it's not just about me and my buddy McLovin, and we're trying to uh, do naughty things on the weekend just for kicks, just for fun, but it's really about a whole new economy, a whole new world that we live in where, look, we're, we're flat. Like, the world is flat again. We, we are not distributed across the face of the earth. We are all online. We are all on the internet, whether you're from the US or whether you're from Europe or whether you're from really uh, growing countries that are starting to get online. And now you have millions and millions or billions of people in, in developing countries who are now getting online and they need to prove who they are and they want to be a part of this online economy too. Uh, dude, this uh, this area is is exploding, or is going to uh, is going to grow just astronomically. So, wish you all the best of the w- wish you all the best in this new economy, in this new space, and all the challenges that you're going to have to overcome. But before we go, Ron, do you have any final words of wisdom for our audience? And then please share the best way that we can connect with you. Then we'll say goodbye. I'm just saying, I mean, open your eyes, open your ears, learn, because I think, you know, I, as I say to my to our customers, we don't think we're the smartest person in the room, but, you know, what, what makes us strong is, is our ability to listen to what our customers need, needs and, and, you know, and how we can modify, you know, the, how you can modify your business to the changing environments. Um, if you would like, uh, I'm, I'm, I'll be more more than happy to connect with any of you that want to chat. You know, you can either use our website, which is www um, at authentic. It's a u one zero t i x. You have all our emails over there. I'm also I'm on Twitter. I'm on LinkedIn. You know, you just use my name. I'm very accessible. You have the emails over there, um, and um, I'm definitely. I think, you know, as one of our customers, um, um, uh, Dan Schulman, on his visit to, um, from PayPal, that has visited Israel, and he said, we're, we're not in even the end of the beginning of uh, the, the newborn of financial services. It's just, it's just starting. And, um, you know, I, I see for the industry um, interesting opportunities but also very interesting challenges. And it's going to be very interesting to see who would reinvent itself and who would not reinvent itself. Awesome. Great stuff, Ron. Thank you so much for joining me on Hello Tech Pros today. I really value this conversation because um, I, uh, I'm starting to travel more and I'm starting to get out of my shell. You know, I've, I've suffered with social anxiety in the past. And when you do that, you think internally, right? You think all about yourself. And so now I'm changing to think more about um, my fellow, I don't know, fellow people across the world and and the challenges that they uh, experience and how we are all uh, working and living and evolving in this new economy and uh, all of the all of the different challenges that are out there that we need to overcome. Great stuff, man. I appreciate you sharing it with us today. Chad, thank you much for the opportunity. Um, being on your program, and I'm looking forward for future uh, dis- discussions between which will be very fruitful. Awesome. Sounds great. Cool. Tech Pros, if you are in this space where where maybe you have a startup, right? Maybe you're building a startup and, and you have, of course, like a, a customer registration piece of it, you really need to think through in your space what is the regulation, right? What are the critical pieces of information? Because we got a balance. It's always a balance between knowing who your customer is and privacy at the same time. So how do you do the best of both? You know, what are the regulations in place? Or if you're in a brand new market that you're inventing that nobody's ever thought of before, there is no regulation, what there sh- what regulation should there be in a few years after you establish this market? Or what regulation... Uh, opportunities will come up once this market kind of gets a little bit more established and really think about how to balance between, you know, getting the right information from your customers so that you can prove who they are as well as the privacy aspect at the same time. It's, it's probably going to be very, very 
difficult if you're in a new market. But I challenge you to really look at that, you know, take away a lot of the information that Ron has shared with us and go forward and build great things. You've been listening to Ron Atzman and I'm Chad Bostic. And until next time, take care. The show notes page for this episode can be found at hellotechpros.com slash 214. Do you use Slack for team communication? Join the Hello Tech Pros Slack channel at hellotechpros.com slash Slack. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a review, subscribe to this channel, and check back tomorrow. This has been Technology Thursday, but tomorrow my featured guest and I discuss people and communication. On Saturday, we talk entrepreneurship. Son, I'm Chad Bostic, and until next time, take care.